Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, wherever or whatever the time is, whenever you're uh, hopefully watching this podcast. Um, I've got a little bit of a repeat guest uh, today, and uh, I'll explain to you later on why why he's a repeat guest. Um, but we're joined today by Stephen Dixon. So for those of you who've never seen him in action, um, Stephen, lovely to have you on board. Thank you so much. It's as good as it gets. Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll remember that one as well. Now, Steve, please, can you just give a quick brief who you are, what you've done, and uh, then I'll come to a, a <coughs> series of questions thereafter. Sure. Um, yeah, no, thanks for inviting me on again, Chris. Um, I am Stephen, uh, Stephen Dixon, as you say, and the managing partner of a small consulting firm called Skylight Aviation. <clears throat> and we work across a number of different... Um, different functions in the aviation airline space, across airlines, airport, ground handlers, regulators, etc., to, to, um, to, well, in ordinary times, support them with kind of uh, business improvement, um, you know, operations, transformation opportunities, uh, into executive posts, etc. And um, we've got a great, great team of people in the business that, um, that support me with, with delivering for our clients. And um, so, uh, so thanks for inviting me on today. Absolute pleasure. Now, Stephen, um, we started off, Salem and myself, we decided that we would do a series of industry experts, industry characters, industry personalities for the purpose of just getting to know the person behind the position. And the reason we wanted to do that was to make people realize what a wonderful industry this was and for any youngsters who were thinking of getting into it, that they'd be able to see the types of people that were already in there driving it, leading the industry and um, what types of characters they could or would like to be working for. We then, as things progressed, we started then to look at a certain series and, we, and we, were, we were following up with ladies in logistics and there's so many and so many good ones and we'll be continuing with that series. We're also doing sessions on private aviation and uh, quite a few of them will be coming up shortly. And then, like the rest of the world, everybody was hit with this crisis and we then decided that you know, maybe we should do something a little bit more regular and not too focused because we're not experts, but we're experts in what we do and how this virus is affecting us. So myself and Salem, we sat down and we, we sort of said to each other, do you know something, it'd be good if we could find somebody who A, had a really good approach and personality, B, were quite knowledgeable across the full spectrum of aviation, logistics, etc. C, were not afraid to be quite outspoken. And D, had a lot of practical uh, knowledge and experience and weren't full of theory and, and, and padding things out. And then we wanted somebody that I thought I could actually relate to and um, rely on and also respect. So the reason we've got you on is, do you know anybody like that? <laughs> it's, for the, it's for the warm-up act. <laughs> <laughs> no. I need is the warm-up. Yeah. No, so seriously, we, we, you came on the first time and it was a, an absolute pleasure. Now, the second time you came on, obviously it was, it was audio only. And the reason being, you weren't very well. So, I mean, I take it you're all, you're all recovered now. Yes, much better, thanks. Yeah, no, I think... Um, I think we had to delay our um, delay our recording the last time, and um, I um, I'm not certain because uh, because of course of the testing capability, but I'm pretty pretty sure that um, that, uh, that I was probably uh, probably struck down uh, as many others have been um, uh, by um, by uh, some form of dose of um, of COVID nineteen. Um, as I say, I wasn't tested, and I and I don't know that for sure, but certainly a number of the symptoms would have played out in 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 that sense, and. Um, if you looked at my travel history over the over the preceding weeks, <clears throat> which I think included Philippines, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Indonesia, UK, Saint Lucia, Trinidad, probably missed one there, but I'm sure I'm sure sure, sure people won't be so critical if I've missed one off the list. Um, I would uh, I thought to myself I would be unlucky not to have catch caught caught um, caught coronavirus. So so yeah, no, much better, much better. Thanks for asking, but. Um, it certainly does put into into context, kind of, you know, when we're chatting today, um, you know, where 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 the industry is currently at, the challenges not only for industry but more broadly in in the economic sense, 
and for mankind. This is this has been a major, major, major shift in 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 the way people lead their lives and go about their daily business. And therefore, <clears throat> whilst I'm I'm I've come through the other side, and you know I was I'd relatively relatively light and minor symptoms. I know there are others that um, that obviously haven't and saddened by the deaths that we see every day. So pray pray to God that we and uh, we come out on the come out of the back of this um, and uh, with a much um, you know, much, uh, much stronger kind of, um, you know, case of humanity and community feel, which I think has been in evidence a lot over the last couple of weeks, which is what I certainly said on our last recording. It's good. Yeah, no, and, and before we get, before we get into any discussion or whatever, uh, again, it's so important to recognise and respect everybody that's been involved in just, just keeping the basic world that we all took for granted, ticking along and moving and, and working the way we all naturally expect it to, that they're exceptional heroes, all of them. And then obviously what you said, the, the sad, sad, sad loss of life, you know, and you listen to people on the telly saying, you know, maybe, and, and would they have Annie out? It doesn't matter. It's just such a sad, sad situation that, you know, this has happened the way it's happened. And, you know, please God, there, there will be a reduction in the impact and better learning and better <coughs> preparation in the future to make sure that the impact isn't isn't continuing. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's sort of uh, you know um, too many too many to list off in terms of the people that have that have been been um, you know the unsung heroes as well as the you know, in the UK for listeners they'll recognise and I think other parts of the world but but certainly in the UK and and in, in Spain and Italy there's been a a great sense of community and camaraderie with the. <clears throat> with the weekly, you know, clap for carers or clap for yeah, NHS, yeah. which is fantastic. But actually, um, you know, we 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 mustn't forget the uh, you know the police force or the supermarket workers or the or the Amazon warehouse packers or the you know, delivery drivers, the cross channel drivers, you know, doing the daily runs across across um you know, across the country, across border. You know, people working in warehouses all over the world to actually keep 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 you know um, keep us in some form of semblance of, of normality of existence. And um, so, yeah, absolutely right, Chris. I'd, I would, um, I'd second that uh, wholeheartedly. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I, I, was just, I was just saying to somebody today on a, on a meeting that when you grow up, you know, you get comics and you get little toys and you get action men and you get uh, films with heroes and all the heroes wear uniforms. They've either got capes or they've got, you know, a big S or whatever. And, you just get so accustomed to it. And then you look at sports stars and film stars and you think they're heroes. But in truth now, the, 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 real, the real interpretation of a hero is coming out and it's people that we've seen every day that we didn't take any notice of. And they all, most of them, do wear a uniform and they are pretty quiet and they're not over the top and they're the ones that are the most important people at the moment. So it's amazing. Yeah, indeed. Now, okay, with that said... Now, one of the things that I want to talk to you about, no matter what business, what, no matter what industry, everybody's been, been affected. So now there's, a, 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 there's an even more, more of a dilemma, which is we need to be in lockdown. We need, to, we need to fight this and we need to protect ourselves from it until such time as it can be managed in a more better way. That also comes with certain shortfalls and certain pressures and the pressures now and as some of the politicians and, and people are talking about is what's the exit plan? So how do we get out of the lockdown and get the old wheels of economy running and, and as smoothly as possible? What's your take, Steve, on, on how things are going to start to to develop and move? Well, I think it's probably a bit of a slow burn, I suspect, Chris. I mean, um, you know, uh, with, without trying to sound like a politician, and certainly it's not appropriate, as we said last time, to discuss sort of the the medical, uh, uh, you know, science around this, um, but I think we we will be guided by the science, and we'll be guided we'll be guided very much by the medical medical, um, you know, uh, outcomes. Um, you know, an improvement, <clears throat> an improvement in um, you know reduction of cases, reduction of deaths. Um, you know, the certainly will demonstrate that the, 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 the virus isn't um, isn't 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 spreading. Um, as aggressively as maybe as it once was, but I guess you know a, a couple on to that. <clears throat> Consumer confidence needs to rebuild. Um, you know, airlines, um, uh, businesses, um, you know, banks, small, small, medium-sized enterprises. 
you know, everybody's got to kind of regroup and reassess and re and re re engage with the outside world with with largely what they've out, they've not engaged with over the last couple of couple of weeks, couple of months. Um, you know, and whilst we're starting to see, I guess, some sort of you know glimmers of hope and sort of you know um, some light at the end of the tunnel in terms of you know the tide maybe being turned <clears throat> in some of the Asian countries, uh, particularly North Asia and China, uh, South Korea. Um, you know, where the virus had taken hold pretty strongly early on, um, we're starting to see, you know, a, a you know a semblance of um, of a return to to a sense of normality. What that what that sense of normality is, I'm not quite sure. And I think the the new normal, as we sort of discussed, and is now being widely coined as a phrase, you know, more broadly <clears throat> than just our podcast um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, um, is is you know people are starting to now sort of develop, um, engineer, but you know uh, I I suspect that um that those that have got first mover advantage or those that have those that have the ability to to respond quickly agile, you know businesses that have responded to customers well during this crisis, airlines that have that have done the right thing by by their customers specifically in our industry. Um, whether they're, they're commercial passenger customers or they're freight customers or the forwarders or, or whatever involved in that kind of, you know, the supply chain and the industry in which we work, Chris. <clears throat> I think those that have been seen to do the right thing by the customer, um, uh, by government, maybe for political capital purpose or, or otherwise, who would, have, who would have thought that politics would get in the way of a, of a return to normality in a crisis? Um, but, um, uh, you know, I'm, no, I'm no, no sort of cynic, but I think that's the reality is, is people yeah. who want to do the yeah. right thing by government and to ensure that they have a they have a strong footing and that government supports business as as as, as far as it has been. And certainly, I've been very impressed. Some of the measures we've seen, not only in Europe but also also across the Atlantic in North America in the USA, um, you know, with President Trump and his approach to to supporting business. Um, you know, I was reading the other day. I think it's been fifty to sixty percent of 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 business in in the USA is is uh, you know small and medium sized enterprises um you know businesses like 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 mine and and ours that um you know that 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 you know we pay our fair share of taxes we contribute to society we we employ a small number of people but actually that's kind of the lifeblood of 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 these these economies across the globe so whether you're a large you know, largest economy in the world like like the united states or you're you know far smaller and therefore more fragile economy um some of the smaller countries um, you know, Italy, Greece, etc., who have had their own challenges along the way as well. I, I suspect that a, a recovery for each of those markets and each of those countries and each industry, Chris, will look very different for different people. Um, yeah. But I, but I suspect that that it has to be predicated on on medical science. It has to be has to be led by government and those you know the 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 the, the scientific officers and the scientific the, the scientific advisory uh, boards or or or, or councils and um, and business needs to. Business needs to play its part in listening to that advice, and um, there may well be opportunity for challenge down the line. There may well be opportunity for inquests, or you know, yeah, royal commissions, yeah. or committees, or whatever to investigate government response. But, but my view, uh, quite simply, now is not the time. Now is the time to galvanise uh, behind behind your 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 team of government ministers. And whilst we may not always agree with government. Um, I'm certainly as outspoken as many about some things that that, that my government does and our government does, uh, um, but um, but now is not the time. I think I think the time now is for is for business to knuckle down, you know, do do what it, do what it needs to do to to maintain maintain a level of um, of um, of health, you know, whether that's financial health or consumer health or employee health, in terms of being being able to respond. When the opportunity affords them to reopen again. So, sorry, it's a, a fairly, fairly long kind of um, answer to a relatively short question, but I think it's important to frame it contextually because, um, you know, today, today, you know, we are what the fifteenth of, of April. This this will go out next week. I'm, I'm sure it's so a pretty, pretty soon after recording. But you know, what what we have seen is the medical science is changing very, very quickly. Yeah, it's incredible. And, uh, and therefore, we have to be very careful about you know making making any hypotheses or 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 um, you know, assumptions about what may be, because actually in a few days' time, this, this could change very rapidly. For good and for bad. For good and for bad. Yeah, and, and what you said there about, <laughs> about science and technology and everything, um, 
and again, not not an expert opinion by any means, but um, I do think that as shocking as this has all been and the speed that it's taken over, once we start getting some positive scientific and medical news, that will also speed up and, and things will also then start to swing back. And please God, it'll happen. <laughs> However, well, I mean, uh, but there, 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 are, there are other anecdotes as well as the science, Chris. I, I think, I mean, one of the things that, that, um, that you and I spoke about offline um, was the British Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, being, being um, you know, first admitted to the hospital. And then a few days later, the, the announcement came that he's admitted to intensive care. Now, regardless of your politics, um, what I saw was a country that was visibly uh, shocked yeah, um, yeah. shaken, um, disturbed, um, concerned, worried, all of those, all of those sort of um, uh, adjectives you could use to describe someone's, someone's um, uh, you know, state of mind or being. And um, that was very real. Um, and so people were quite, you know, down, downheartened and sort of downtrodden uh, after that news. But what I did see after his, his release from intensive care and his release from hospital was a nation that was much more positive and, and you know, we, 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 you know, their strength was somehow rebuilt after this. So yes, the science, the science is important, but actually having somebody that you recognize and you know that has gone through this and come out the other side who's been, who's been very, 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 very poorly, I mean, seriously, seriously ill, and come out the other side of it. And, um, you know, I certainly wouldn't think the Prime Minister would describe himself as being back into, into fighting form, although no Boris. <laughs> He may well do, oh, yeah. but, um, but, um, but those anecdotes as well of personal experiences are as important, I think, uh, as the science. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I agree, I agree. Mm. And, and um, funny enough, what you're saying there about um, now is not the time to investigate, to, you know, to point things, etc. I've, I've done my own nine, nine steps of a crisis, and I believe at the moment we're, we're, we're in between step four and step five, and it's... It's between blame and re-entrenchment and retrenching. And I think as soon as the fingers of blame and the, the little words and the little prompts come out, whether it's from politicians, whether it's from people in their own companies, whether it's individuals, whatever, as soon as that happens, you've got to stop it really quickly, retrench and start moving forward in a positive way. Otherwise, the new normal won't be as effective and as positive as it possibly should be. Yeah, 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 wholeheartedly agree. Yeah, so now we're talking about new normal. And, and one of the reasons why I've enjoyed having you on and I enjoy your company is that we, we, uh, we do tend to think in a similar way. And um, I've enjoyed it. And now I'd like to move forward a little bit on the new normal and what we've spoken about. So everybody needs to look back now and they must look back because all our yesterdays are gone. Tomorrow is not going to be the way we always assumed it would be, and it's going to be very different. And luckily enough, my son gave birth um, to his second daughter um, this afternoon, so I'm absolutely over the moon. Um, and as soon as he said everything was okay, our immediate fears were, you know, where are you? And he had to leave the hospital straight away. And now he's been yeah. told he can come back when he can collect her. So we're hoping that she'll be out tonight or late this first thing in the morning but you do have a different sort of worry. And that fear is going to be a cloud that's going to hang around all of us for a long time after this. So the new normal has to be something that people focus on and focus on with a positivity rather than negativity. Otherwise, that will also keep bringing people down and down and down. So now the new normal and lessons learned, we've spoken about it and we've also spoken about putting together a, a sort of a new normal formula or, or um, what we call a survival <laughs> kit. Now, let's just, let's just share a few of those ideas with people. So if you don't mind, you know, what do you think as far as you're concerned are the first few steps that we should all be looking at from a new normal? Well, firstly, Chris, I, I, I guess, um, I guess a, um, a note of congratulations to Joe and his, his um his lovely, lovely um, wife and um, and your your um, your new granddaughter. So congratulations to you and all the family. Firstly, um, yeah. that's a, a great bit of positive news. On you know when there's lots of lots of doom and gloom in the world um, and lots of negativity, a bit of positive, a bit of positivity and hope. Just as I was saying, you know, anecdotes like that are, are fantastic for spurring yeah. people through a crisis. So so congratulations to you and Kathy and all the all the family. 
Um, um, look, I guess I, you know, the, the, I, as I sort of intimated just now, you know, this is this is a this is a moving feast. You know, there are there are many moving parts to this. Um, uh, I guess, but what 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 we've seen, and whilst it won't be applicable necessarily for every part of of every you know uh, various function or or you know business within our industry, I think I think there's a lot of it that that is pretty general. And the key, the key, the key for for our listeners or for 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 business to is to work out how does this apply to you, you know, uh, you know. So what what walk in walk in the shoes of your organisation, but more critically, walk in the shoes of your customers. So when you're thinking about the new normal, when thinking about what 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 is now different in my world tomorrow than was the case yesterday. So you know, yesterday's. Yesterday's experience is no longer apply. In fact, I think I remember on my first podcast saying to you that, you know, I'd much rather employ somebody with the with the with the with the talent and skills than somebody that continually harps on about experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, because experience could well be somebody in the same role or a similar role who's moved you know vertically through an organisation, but but it's it's certainly sort of you know it's, it's one or two years to the power of five, ten, fifteen, twenty when you're viewing experience. Actually, what you want people along that journey to do is harness, galvanize and 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 and, and learn um, skills and capabilities and competencies, um, you know, the result in competency output. And I think it's the same here, because we must all learn again. And I think that's a starting point is is, you know, what has applied yesterday, as you as you said earlier, um, you know, does not necessarily apply today or 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 tomorrow. Um, and I think what we've got to do is is say, look, how how well were we as a business prepared for a case of this magnitude? Yeah. Now the critics will immediately say, yeah, but nobody could ever have possibly imagined that something like this would happen. Well, actually they could. Yeah. Because our industry in aviation is probably the most fragile, uh, 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 crisis prone um, uh, industry or, or set of businesses within, within a you know, broader industry. Um, you know, whether it's bird flu or it's SARS or it's MERS or it's September 11th or it's a volcano or it's an earthquake or it's pilot strikes or it's industrial relations or it's, or it's, um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's government or it's ATC crises or it's, in, it's highly paid industrial strikes by, by air traffic controllers or, or whatever, whatever, whatever. One thing that aviation has been able to do in some way, shape or form is respond to various magnitudes of crises. So if you look at the Richter scale, um, uh, you know you, you can sort of you know deal you know anything up to about five, five or five and a half, six is is certainly you know I mean six would probably have a massive impact here in the UK. Um, looking out uh, you know, to the tall buildings that I'm surrounded by, um, um, but anything up to around six probably in Japan is unlikely to to have much of much of an effect. Um, you know, when you start to push seven and eight, then it starts to get a little bit more worrying, a little bit more impactful. But, but on, a, on a scale, industry and business, you know, uh, has had to be able to respond to various, various magnitudes of, 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 of crisis. So I think that, 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 that what this tells us is that, look, we've got the competencies, we've got the skills, we've got the talent and the people to be able to do this. But, you know, we need to become much more, you know, risk aware. Yeah. Um, you know, and and in that risk awareness, so that that enhanced, let's call it enhanced risk awareness, is, you know, build build, you know, build in m- a number of more more uh, uh, varied scenarios or or you know contingency plans for events that you might well have thought at the time were utterly ludicrous or ridiculous and couldn't couldn't possibly eventuate. But you know, risk awareness, contingency planning, building on. Building on all the good BCP that already happens within aviation space, um, you know, it's not just going to a yearly crisis management refresher or an emergency response procedure session. It's actually much more about saying, let let let's take my take take ourselves out of the of the business for 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 a bit, and let let's put on that kind of the the, the hat that says, you know, how do we now respond in futures to things of this magnitude? Because if something of this magnitude can ground people, um both in terms of the travel but also in, in business, close businesses, shut down businesses, you know, businesses going bankrupt, businesses having to 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 look for emergency funding and people ending up on the in the dole queue. Um thousands and thousands and thousands of people dying uh, and being hospitalized as a result, then then I can bet my bottom dollar that something of that magnitude will come along again. So actually taking a much a much more 
you know, macro level approach in this is going to be is going to be kind of key. I think. Um, I agree with you, and I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking of so many people that I've seen around some of the boardrooms and and senior meetings um, over the past I don't know 10, 15 years of my career. I'd love to bump into them again because mm. you know too many people turned a blind eye um, yeah. to, to to being risk averse and risk aware, and also you know the types of continuity and contingency issues that should be in place. Now, one of the things that um, also most companies didn't do, and, and again, this isn't just harping on the back of hindsight, um, worst case scenarios. But on the flip side of worst case scenarios, something can equally be as challenging, which is best case scenarios. So now as we go into the new normal, there's going to be a different challenge, which is everybody's going to have to reboot and re-energize and, and kick kickstart everything all at once. So they're going to have to contend with people's own anxieties, fear levels, yeah. the fact that they're not sure what they're going to do, what the future is going to be like. Then you've got to have different types of leadership, different motivational factors. How do you manage people who work from home? How do you make them yeah. feel part of the team? All these different dynamics are going to be as challenging because of best case scenario as well as worst case scenario. Look, I mean, you know, you, you, you see the way that some businesses have responded, um, you know, passenger aircraft being put into, into commercial service for free, free operation. You know, Freighters. Been, you know, you know, uh, you know, I've been personally involved in some of, some of our clients. Um, and, you know, people responding to an opportunity that, well, this is, this is a, little bit, a little bit different for us. But, um, you know, we, we're kind of saying, look, you know, how, do we, how, does, how does one respond to this in the most positive, effectual way? to be able to generate, uh, you know, a cent or a dollar of income and revenue that is meaningful. I don't say a cent, I mean, you know, a meaningful revenue stream during a crisis. And that, that, has, that, has, ne that has necessitated, Chris, there, there, there existing some leaders that have, you know, pardon, pardon, my, pardon my phraseology, but that have got some balls that are not risk averse, but are very much risk aware. Yeah, and and the two the two can go hand in glove. I mean, they 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 are not mutually exclusive. You know, risk awareness doesn't mean that 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 that, that you are that you are um uh you know totally risk averse. Um, you know, you you have to actually you know have a degree of some some acceptance of some level of risk when re-engineering and redesigning your business. You know, and that's a lot of the thought that we've been putting into this is how do we support business? How does Skylight Aviation support its clients? with some of this kind of, you know, a different approach um, that engenders some of those qualities and some of those leadership techniques and skills and, and capabilities in a workforce that has followed the norm, that has been, you know, uh, um, you know, much, much more sort of, you know, followers. There are very few innovators in aviation, let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very few innovators. But I, but I think what this crisis has done is actually, it has shown that there are quite a few innovators out there and not necessarily the ones that you would that you yeah. would have suspected, yeah. Um, and that's really refreshing and reassuring that there exists this this kind of this um, maybe it's like a pinked up, you know, frustrated sort of um, uh, 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 latent um, you know capability to do something that's different. So I think you know helping employees return to work, helping business and um, business leaders, um, you know, right from 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 boards, you know, because boards are some of those painful painful uh, 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 sort of your existence in, in business boards boards are generally quite risk averse i mean they're generally not 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 willing to take much um uh uh, uh risk that them that uh which is know, why either. they spend so much money on consultants to endorse what they knew anyhow but they weren't sure where <laughs> they should stand up for well well i, I well i mean I, look, I, I think the consultancy gravy train it for engaged by boards will certainly have disappeared i think what, what we're looking for is, is certainly much a very much a new new approach to this chris and Yes. And, you know, yeah. uh, ensuring that the boards have got the information they need to make the decisions. But actually, you know, how do we diversify? Whether it's the it's the local, you know, food and uh, 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 vegetable, uh, fruit and vegetable wholesaler that's now turned his hand to delivering to retail, delivering to customers' front doors. Yeah. He's lost his he's lost his wholesale business. So I think within the airline space, I think, <clears throat> you know, um, you know, uh, training and uh, and coaching and management and mentoring. Of, of leaders into this new normal is going to be as critical, um, you know, and, and also boards and management teams having to be agile. Um, I, I, I think that, 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 you know, we are, we spend a lot of time thinking, 
yeah. in normal normal operations. So the, let's call it the old normal. You know the the the, so the ones the ones was all our yesterdays. All of our yesterdays, um, you know, has been. It's all retrospective. It's all based on experience. It's all based on or predicated on somebody's personal view or anecdotes about how they did it in the past. Um, doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter now. Yeah. And, and and business has demonstrated that it doesn't matter. So I think I think what 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 we'll we'll need to sort of you know do is um, in the short term certainly you know it's part of this this the the the, the, the formula to support delivery of the new normal. You know, we've got to exit this state of emergency. Uh, business has got to stabilize liquidity. We've got to focus on the human capital and people and, and relationships and, and, and competency and, and, and capability. And then, you know, try to, to, to respond to the new normal business environment. And what that looks like for different people will, will, be, will, be, yeah. will be different for, for different, different firms. Yeah, no, 100%. And, and um, you know, one of the things with the, with the new normal is, is just getting people to think differently. Some of the people that I've spoken to over the last week or so, um, it's not something that's wrong. But, you know, in normal life, you sort of have a feeling or you'd like to do something or whatever. And then mm. you've got a vast majority of people who know that's what they want to do, but they want somebody else to endorse it or to, you know, give recognition that that's what they want. And then you've got a very few people who, you know, will do it because they think, right, irrespective of any pain or any issues, that's what's got to be done. Now, there are more people in the first category than the second category. And I think what a lot of organizations need at the moment, yeah. whether they'll accept yeah. it or not, or whether they'll appreciate it or not, is they need that, that, um, that separation, that lack of emotion and passion. And they just need to disengage, you know, from legacy inefficiencies and, and get somebody to say, no, 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 no. This is a new code of practice. Keep that as your checklist. When you're making decisions, only focus on the critical issues still keep an eye on strategy and tactical because you've got to do those because you've got to think medium to long term, but do what's necessary now and do it very effectively, very quickly. Yeah, I think, um, you know, and I think there are, there are, there are, there are people within, within, um, you know, existing organizations been looking at some of, some of, some of my clients, you know, that, that have got, that have got this down to T and we will be able to, to, you know, straddled, straddled both kind of categories that, that you see there. Um, but I think, you know, you sort of never, you know, never, never let a good sort of crisis um, go to waste. I mean, I think you had a lot of people say in recent, um, recent weeks. Um, but there's a fine balance, Chris. There's a fine balance from, from you know, sort of managing business as usual um, to, you know, the skills that are required to run the day-to-day -day organization and business are very different than the skills that are going to be required to establish, you know, the new normal. Yeah. To yep. to yep. Um, to restart the business. Um, you know, some some airlines. I mean, you look at the the network of ports. I mean, they might be flying to to you know, anything from you know sort of small scale 30, 40 ports to you know some airlines and and and, and service providers are operating you know 200, 300, 300 stations or ports yep. you know, plus. Yeah. Um, the type of talent and capability that you require to to do that is very different in terms of a restart, in terms of prioritization, managing the managing the regulatory needs, managing the critical the critical um, compliance aspects. Um, you know, with a with a lens on the commercial and the economics, but also not forgetting that this advice is changing, and you know we could well restart, and we could well find ourselves re 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 restarting. You know the um, restarting business and restarting operations to to a number of number of uh, number of ports and airlines re 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 entering the, the markets very quickly. That clock can come back down again and close us out. Yep, hundred percent. And I think we're going to have to have some kind of mechanism to have you know a very wide lens on on you know kind of you know what regulators and governments and the ministries are doing all around the world um, because you know. There's 200 something countries in the world, 198 or 200 countries thereabouts that are certainly United Nations members from memory. And um, therefore, there's 200 different views about, about what's right and what's wrong. And actually, you multiply that by, by 50 odd states in the US. Oh, and they're <laughs> all know? different. There's, so there's, there's 250 views now, right? Um, so, so you look at it and say, okay, uh, uh, you know, 
we've got to be able to respond to the new normal demands on this, you know, focus on agility and stop start capability. But I need a team of people to actually be able to managing my business as usual, which is what I'm operating normally, what I'm starting to rebuild. I need somebody who's looking much, much, much more ahead of the game. I need somebody who can look kind of, you know, um, you know, uh, a few months, six months ahead of the game. So, you know, very short, short to medium terms, sort of the tactical, tactical yeah. uh, uh, agility of that, of that space. And, and so you're going to have to have pockets of people around an organization that requires kind of a, a coordinated control, you know, control center type approach to, 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 to this. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that, that kind of control center type model that, you know, that, that, that yeah, thinking on the hoof now, but, you know, we, 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 you know, we've used that and seen that and used in anger in normally in emergencies or crisis, crisis environments. But you're going to need something of that ilk to be able to scale up, scale down, retract, uh, you know, and engage, um, you know, manage the commercial piece, you know, close it down, um, open sales, close sales, you know, um, you know, that sort of, you know, mixed mode type operations. When do we put freight into market? When do we close it down? When do we put customer into market? When do we close it down? How do we keep supply chain and trade across industry? There's, there's a lot of this thinking that has to go on that, that, um, that I suspect a lot of businesses are already doing. Um, and, uh, and if they're not, then, 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 then I, would, I, would, I would respectfully suggest that you probably need to be. But yeah. you know, that phased operational recovery, getting stability, closing it down, phased, you know, I, again, the medical science will dictate how this, how this pans out yeah. in terms yeah. of this phased, phased approach. But, you know, and it's going to require scoping of new procedures, new standards, you know, new policies, new contracts arrangements, new, new service level arrangements. Um, I mean, even things like, you know, spatial, uh, uh, spatial distancing, sorry, social distancing, you know, I was talking to technology provider that we worked with yesterday, but how do we manage this in the airport environment? You know, how do we, how do we create, you know, virtual representation or visuals, you know, with, with, with cameras in, this, in the roof that, that some great companies like Zobis are already doing, but how do we use that to manage social distancing alert? People yeah, in, you know, two, that's it. One, and, and, and that's Shops, changed the whole lounges. dynamic around airports, um, uh, airports management, et cetera. So we're already working on stuff like that for clients already. But, you know, a lot, a lot of this is, is, is um, you know, I see it's, it's learning again. It's learning, learning, learning again and, and, and learning what the new normal will be. And, and what it will be is, is nothing like it looked like before. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and having those skilled people that ready to come back from what they've experienced is going to be a very, very difficult thing. And they're going to be in short supply. And um, that's why I was saying earlier, it's one thing to look at worst case scenario, but best case scenario puts a different set of pressures on as well. Well, I think the best case, I mean, best case scenario, I mean, uh, everybody, everybody, everybody trying to, to restart operations to the same, the same, the same ports at the same time, you know, requiring dedication or, or focus by a small group of service providers, requiring a coordinated approach by the regulators, yeah. um, requiring an international response by the likes of ICAO or um, EASA, FAA, et cetera, around, around some of this stuff. You know, single bodies don't exist in an organization except one, which is IATA, which is a trade body, which doesn't really, it reflects the views for the most part of its members, but, but to a large extent, it doesn't always reflect its members' views anyway. Yeah. Um, and I asked it probably is trying to find its feet because they, they don't have the teeth. ICAO does have the teeth, but is, is, um, is very much dependent on its member states of 190 something member states. And, and therefore, you know, uh, this is going to be, you know, it's like sort of finding, finding a way in the dark. I mean, on some of those programs that you've seen about, you know, um, dating in the dark, you know, finding, finding, finding your way into the restaurant managing to sit yourself down at the table, you know, but you've had to work, work through a crowd to kind of get there and make sure it's the right person, the right, the right, the right, um, the right demographic that you might have been expecting. Um, Always uh, interesting how your mind works, Steve. That's what I love, son. <laughs> Always interesting. Yeah. But I, look, I do think it's a bit like finding, finding your way through in the dark. So, you know, yeah. It's very much about feeling your way through this and, 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 and um, you know, people that we may not have relied on or, or people that we may have relied on before we may not be able to rely upon to, to galvanize a response. Uh, you see how difficult it is to get one single message. So you're absolutely right. You know, the, 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 the talent and the capability is there certainly within the industry, but you know, how do we, how do we all, you know, if we're all going after the same kind of, uh, you know, restart program, which I, I, I can't imagine will be the case because to be honest, I mean, best case, I mean, wonderful thing about best case scenario, the best case is we open up tomorrow and everybody goes back to normal and, yeah, no, but I, I, I need to just verify there. When I'm talking about best case scenario, I'm talking about not the full 
the full um, the full landscape. What I'm talking about, best case scenario for three months, you've got to get as much business and ramp up as quickly as you can. Then okay. best case scenario is regulators and authorities will be much, much faster because of pressures to make decisions and to enhance mm. business. Best case scenario with leaders is that they're going to have to learn very, very quickly how to motivate, how to make their employees productive and how to make their employees not full of fear yeah. that when it does come to a contraction that they won't know what to do during that mm. period because that's when people can be retrained. That's when you can still keep people so that they're enablers instead of instead of uh, inhibitors within the business and that it will come again. So it's teaching people as well as companies to be a lot more agile than ever they were. Oh, uh, for sure. And that's going to be a cyclical process as we go yeah. through this and, 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 you know, fits and starts. Um, but, um, you know, I think, um, you know, the, the, Businesses, you know, I mean, it's fair to say that a lot of a lot of thought by the large organisations will have been given to this, um, you know, who've got the large corporate support uh, machines behind them, you know. So when you look at some of the the large flag carriers or the large the large airline groups in terms of the IEGs or the the Air France KLMs and the Lufthansa groups and 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 you know whatever, you know, they, they've got huge collateral behind them, you know, huge huge um, corporate uh, machines to support. Uh, the ones I fear for are this kind of smaller independent, you know, uh, airlines, airports, ground service providers who who don't have all of that that collateral. And you know, Lufthansa will tell you it's hard, and Qantas will tell you it's hard, and 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 American Airlines will tell you it's tough, and IEG will tell you the same. Um, but not not any of them will be will be necessarily experiencing the same intellectual or talent challenges or or, or yeah, resourcing yeah. Yeah. challenges. As you know, some of the guys in in you know in, in the much smaller kind of space, um, you know whether it be sort of you know state owned state owned airlines um, that have had interfering governments for too long, um, or it's independently owned you know airlines that have, that have you know have been good operators in the in the in the um, you know, the the, uh, the, so the, the, the days gone by, you know solid solid airlines and solid solid ground handling businesses or solid service providers. That have done relatively well. They've, you know, they've, 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 they've nickled through with, you know, small margins. But it's been a good, a good, solid, trustworthy business of integrity that 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 that, um, that, that the industry can rely on. Those are the ones I fear for Chris because those are the ones that have got the most difficult, or the the, the most challenges in accessing capital. Um, you know, we've seen some challenges with that, even with government offering up funding. It's it's difficult for them to access capital. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They operate in, a, in, a, in, a, in an asset light basis, um, and therefore, you know, the people that have got there are probably very committed and very, very, you know, sort of career stalwarts of those organisations. But those are the ones I think will, 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 will be deserving of some consideration by their customers. Yeah. They're all very well, airlines and, air, and 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 whatever, you know, writing to all of their all of their service providers. You know, we're all going through a difficult patch right now when you've got to cut your rate fifty percent or we're you know changing all yeah, the no, contracts and, and, yeah. and I think hang on there's there's got to be a better way than this um I'm not sure I've got all the answers, but certainly you know exposing some of that and reviewing kind of the the commercial partnerships more longer term you know rewarding longer term relationships exactly is a yeah, much because... more, is a much healthier way to look at it i think than 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 just um you know slapping there an arbitrary an arbitrary um, you know, demand from a customer to supply no, no, no. I, in the good times. If that happens, that's going to be terrible because the, the the rock in the pond solution is no good just to let the ripples keep going and then whoever's standing on the shore gets absolutely soaked. That's a terrible way of, of doing it. And and anybody that does that now, they need their own banana skin because it's wrong what yeah. they'll be doing. So people yeah. need to consider that. Now, yeah. something that I've I've always questioned an awful lot and thought, why... I've been asked many times when you work for a particular company, you know, what do you think of another company in the same sector or they, they try and, you know, entice you to say something. And it's just like in sports. If you always say how good your competitors are in whatever peer element of the business you're in, if you always say how good your competitors are and how much you respect them and you learn from them, etc., mm. it's putting you automatically in that high echelon or that high level uh, the Champions League level, because you are their peer. So if you criticise and you're always being negative about certain competition, it's also bringing yourself down as well. 
Now, I'm a big believer that if people who are competing respect each other and learn from each other, there's also a fine balance of how they can support each other and do things that are effective for the better of the group. Now, obviously, antitrust and all those lovely uh, little influencing factors aside, um, I think there's opportunities now for sectors to grow the cake rather than keep competing and fighting and, and worrying about the size of the slice. Now, do you think there's any merits in that? Well, look, Chris, I mean, this is a... Um, I, I've always used the analogy when describing you know, the difference between full-service carriers and low-cost low cost carriers, the low fares airlines. Um, the difference is for low, for low fares airlines, it's, it's very much a bums on seats game. For full service airlines, who've got all, all the um, all of the O and D capability and uh, you know O and D market price market led pricing, it's very much about uh, maximising yield, uh, um, uh, you know, and, and, and latent demand, um, and matching that to 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 um, you know uh, uh, a yield that delivers you know optimal optimal return per seat. Um, the low cost carrier space is very different, as I said, so it's about bums on seats. And I think this is the, this is the same kind of cause here. I mean, you've got, you know, multiple service providers in the market space, all fighting for, and now fighting for a smaller market, um, because you know, if we can bet our last dollar that, that the market will, 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 for many years, never return to its, to its size of, you know, pre, pre-2020, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, but... You know, a, a joined up, well well constructed, well thought through kind of um, uh, you know, so let's call it a cooperative of some sort, sort of consortium, not consortium, but you know, a cooperative across across like minded like minded um, industry players, whether it be service partners or or otherwise or industry, um, you know, ground service partners, etc., um, to deliver to deliver a consistent um, you know, uh, outcome through an agreed formula yeah. across that across that community or that 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 that, that cooperative, um, you know, may well reap some advantage. And the reason I say that is because of the same analogy I use with sort of the, you know, are you going for 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 yield or are you going for sort of bums on seats? The rationale of bums on seats, of course, is that you can you can numbers. extract extract a lot of numbers and volume, and therefore you can extract a lot of other selling opportunities and potential. Less so with a full service sale. Like, They've, they've democratized that much more so now than ever before but 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 you know let, let, let's accept that the that the um the comparison um uh, uh stand the test so you know this is now probably about saying um you know who is best placed in what what uh, in in specific markets to to deliver a given service yeah and um you know do we all do we all subscribe to a similar set of of um of um models um, probably kind of philosophy, um, not necessarily practices or, or, or operating procedures or standards in that regard, because they'll be different by customer or, 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 or demographic in any case, but, but certainly integrity and, and kind of the, the values. I think probably values is probably the better, better way. How do we capitalize on that then as industry? Because what that then does is that kind of shares out some of that volume. Yeah. That arguably, and, has, and prior to this, Chris, as you and I have discussed offline many times, and I think on our first podcast we did, um, we have been driving down pricing in market to unacceptably low levels when yep. it comes to things like ground handling or cargo handling. And, um, and I, say that, um, I say that kind of cost conscious that, you know, w- with a number of airline customers in which I do global procurement to support their, in the, some of their deals, but we're now going to look for better ways to partner, better ways to extract the value. That value exactly. Yeah. That value does not have to come out in the single dollar or cent that you nickel and dime a, 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 a player for. Actually, that value can come out in better customer service outcomes. It can come out through better customer attention. It can come out through better quality or security or safety outcomes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So and also simpli- not- simplicity, simplicity of expectation, because. Some of the larger boys, the carriers or whatever, or whoever's directing the contract, they want so much. And sometimes that so much is just too much. Well, that's oh, so much. Be it's good also, at, it's be also good something at simple different. Things. I mean, you know, uh, we, 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 thought that the IGOM, we thought that the IGOM was going to simplify things. I, 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 I think it's done, <laughs> it's done anything but that. Um, 
so you know, the, I mean, trying to reinvent the wheel. Look, there's a, there's 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 a lot to digest and take in with this kind of, you know, accepting of the new normal. But 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 some partnerships of value that are created um, with the with the right intentions and with the right construct are you absolutely right. Things like you know um, uh, you know competition law will come into and antitrust immunity and and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, you know, I think it's too early at this phase to 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 understand what that may look like. But yeah. What is important is that we are open to we're open to looking at other ways of creating value within a supply chain. Or a value, uh, you know, a, 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 a industry suppliers and and, and partners yep. have been absolutely bashed and as affected by this crisis as the customer. Um, uh, and in some ways, you know, maybe more. I mean, you look at some of the large ground handlers; they've got maybe two hundred airline customers. Um, uh, you know, they've 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 got um, you know uh, uh, sort of asset light books. You know, little to mortgage in terms of of getting cash back into the business. I mean. And they were operating already on margins of between three to six percent, Chris. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and some um, of them if that. And some of them if that. So, you know, whereas you know, airlines have had an ability to kind of forward book sales, very rarely do you see ground handlers forward booking sales. Um, now those airlines had to, had a choice whether to do the right the right thing for a customer base. Difficult question when it comes to liquidity and managing liquidity. I understand those concerns, but but you know, you've got to think you've got to think at the the, the guy at sort of the end of the end of the um the line who's done his utmost standing the on the shore standing on the shore who you can see from afar and so you, you know jack's all right sort of stand, standing over here but the fellow there's about about to get absolutely washed away and swept yep. away by um by the by the um and that the does no good it. that does no good for the whole chain well we've seen we've seen it 20 years ago chris and well probably 10 years ago in the uk with with grand handling consolidation and in europe um, uh, to a large extent, we've seen it resulting in very poor standards in North America, safety standards and and and, and practices. Um, we've seen it, and you know, little reinvestment in that North American business yeah. uh, in terms of equipment and um, and uh, intellectual capital. And so now we're going to take a step back and say, look, actually, is this, you know, if the cus- if the consumer has an has an expectation that they'll be saying paying the same nine euro ninety nine fares that he was paying. <laughs> You know, pre-COVID nineteen, I think I think that's that's probably probably a very far-fetched um, yeah. uh, 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 proposition. Therefore, you know, at the top end of, of 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 the income generation stream, that then has to trickle down across the across the the. Yeah. I, I don't. I, again, I'm not suggesting for one minute that 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 this will be an easy proposition. It will be an easy restart, or that it applies in every market or every demographic and to every. Every every um, every airline or, or or service provider. However, there is probably some mileage in, in exploring that further. And um, certainly, I, I'm not 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 proposing that we've got we've got all the answers. But set, but I suspect now that that margin matters um, more than ever before. That's a fantastic term, isn't it? Isn't that a fantastic <laughs> term? And it's <laughs> one that people are going to start having to yeah, focus on. I think on margin more matters. More. Yeah. Now, with that, and on that term, margin matters. Just like in all good shows, underneath here now, it should be to be continued. That's right, Chris. All right. So, Steve, if you're happy, I'd like to have you back on a regular basis so that we just have these general chats and, well, and I, I'm discuss. Not, I feel like it's a bit sort of, um, I'm not, 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 not quite sure it's a Michael Aspel. This is your life quite, uh, event quite. No, yet, no, no, but, no. Um, that will be, that, be something different. When, when, when the moods and the, and the uh, environment changes a little, we can have a little bit of fun. Um, but it wouldn't be right to do so at the moment. But to be continued, and I'd like to leave everybody with one last message. Everybody is saying about the NHS. You know I love an acronym. And for me, NHS is New Hope Survives. And as a result of what that group of people have done, it's one of the biggest motivational things I've ever seen. And when you see the clapping on a Thursday and you see the impact it has on some of the NHS workers, it is priceless. Yeah, and so long may it continue. No, it's you hope it's only, survives. It's today, isn't it? It's, it's, we've got that tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Tomorrow's night. Yeah, I'll be out there with me pan and me and me spoon and making as much noise as I'm, possible. I'm sure you will. Yeah, new hope survives. And um, that that shirt of yours makes a lot of noise already on its own, Chris. Ah, yeah, do you like it? Huh? It's not bad, huh? <laughs> hey, could have gone for the easy black option, mate, but put a little bit of colour in. Right, Anyhow, right, listen, right. thanks very much. We'll, 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 uh, we'll do it again. 
And, um, and like I said, we'll, we'll move on from margin matters and we'll start with that particular subject matter then when we come back on. So, Steve, okay. as always, mate, thanks very much. Thanks Glad you're me. feeling much better. Thank you. Glad you're feeling much better. And, um, and let's, let's hit, the, hit the track running and get involved in this new normal and help <coughs> as many people as possible come out of this with a big mix approach of success. Yeah. Well done, Chris. And thanks thank to the new doing it's kind of, um, you know, uh, the, 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 very, the very group of individuals you're having on here. It's, um, I think it's, it's very, very helpful and insightful for a lot of people. So whether, whether, whether they listen to me or not, but I, I do think it's important that, they, um, that, they, uh, that people have got a, an opportunity to hear a cross section of people from industry. And, and um, so well done to you and Salam and the team at EVA for, for putting this together. Nah, I love it. I, I just think people are getting fed up of Mr. Wicks and his healthy, workouts and stuff like that so they might as well just when they've done their workout they can turn this on and start to nod off well at 9 at 9 a.m you've got you've got uh, you've got joe wicks at 5 p.m you've got professor professor um uh, chris witty um and at 5 30 you've got um you've got stephen and chris so that's it that's the way mate and now listen thanks very much okay and we'll definitely do it and Salem, yes. thanks as always for the technical support and the organization and the patience really appreciate it thanks chris